Hi guys, Ranger Kendra here with Alaska Maritime National Wildlife Refuge. I'm coming to you from the Science and Learning Lab at the Islands and Ocean Visitor Center in Homer, Alaska, which is the headquarters for Alaska Maritime National Wildlife Refuge. I'm here today to talk to you some more about this really special group of birds called seabirds. And so if you tuned in last time, you learned that seabirds are birds that live in the ocean or the sea like their name suggests and so everything that they need within their home or their habitat such as their food and water come from the ocean um, and before we talk a little bit more about seabirds today um, each time i visit with you and share more about seabirds i'm going to dress up as an honorary seabird and so today our seabird of choice is one called the red-legged kittiwake and so the red-legged kittiwake um, is found in a few places here in Alaska and you can notice that it gets its name it's a small gull um, but it gets its name from its bright red legs um, and so in honor of our red-legged kittiwake I'm going to put on my red-legged kittiwake helmet now, last time I shared with you, I was a crested ocelet, which is my favorite seabird. And today, I am the red-legged kittiwake. Um, and so, I have a few species of seabirds here with me, and I'll talk about them in just a few minutes. But during my time with you today, I'd like to share with you how some of these birds catch their food from the ocean. And so, if we were to look at seabirds across the world, not just here in Alaska, but all over the world, we can really divide them into two separate groups. We have seabirds that like to swim at the surface of the ocean and catch their food from the surface. They really don't dive under the water. Uh, and they're gonna pick up things like fish and squid from the surface. Our kittiwakes and seabirds also like our albatross here. So this is a laysan albatross. Um, these are both what we would call surface feeders. And so they're gonna feed from the surface. You don't see them diving down in the water. They pick their food off the surface of the ocean. The other group of seabirds are ones that actually dive into the water. And so they can go into pretty deep depths and catch their food underwater. So they're great swimmers, they're great divers. Um, and two examples of our diving seabirds, we have one here, which is called the tufted puffin. And we have another one, which is the common mer. So mers are also great divers. And so this is a common mer. It kind of looks like a penguin. We don't have penguins in Alaska, but they have kind of that look to them. Um, and so mers are also great diving seabirds. And so again, we have really two separate groups of seabirds on how they're catching their food. We have our surface feeders, like our kittiwakes and our albatross, and we have our divers, which are like our puffins and our mers. They can go very deep down into the water. And this really has to do with how their bones are developed or how their bones are adapted to helping them hunt for food. And we think, wow, their bones help them to catch their food. If you are a seabird, like our albatross, which is going to feed off the surface of the ocean. They spend a lot of time in the air flying. And many of you may have heard in the past the idea that birds have hollow bones. So hollow bones really means that they're kind of honeycomb looking on the inside. They have a lot of um, space within them. They're not very dense, which allows them to be much lighter weight and allows them to fly for longer periods of time. They don't have to use as much energy to stay high in the air. Now, when you have hollow bones, it can make it difficult for you to dive. Because if you think of something that's full of a lot of space or a lot of air and you try to put it underwater, what's gonna happen to it? It's going to float right back to the surface. And so our seabirds that like to feed off the surface, they are great flyers and they are great surface feeders, but they really can't dive under the water because they have those lightweight hollow bones. Our other group of seabirds, like our puffins and our mers, these guys have much denser, heavier bones. And that's a special adaptation to allow them to dive deep down into the water. Um, and so again, these guys are great divers, but it, their bones are much heavier because 
They are much denser than our flying, great flying seabirds. And so these guys end up being amazing divers and swimmers, but they're not as good at flying. There's actually one group of seabirds that don't even live here in Alaska. They live down um, in Antarctica that have completely lost their ability to fly, but they're amazing divers. And those are the very popular different species of penguins. Um, but we have a quick demonstration just to show you kind of the difference between flying and surface feeding seabirds like our albatross and our kittiwake versus our diving seabirds like our penguins and our mers. And so here I have a jar of water and with me I have a bone from a like from our albatross that is from a flying surface feeding seabird. And then I have another set of bones from a seabird, let me set this glass down for a second, that is a great diver. So if you look at this skull, you can tell this is a puffin skull. So this is a puffin, which is a great diver. And so we're just going to put each of these inside my water and let's see what happens. So the first thing, and you guys could probably guess what's gonna happen, um, but let's put our flying seabird. So this one has got hollow bones, lightweight bones that help them to fly. So if we put this in here, it's gonna float. Now let's set our diving seabirds. What do you guys think is gonna happen? Down it goes. So again, you have your flyers versus divers. You have those seabirds like our albatross and our kittiwake that are amazing flyers, but they really can't dive because if they do, their hollow bones are just gonna make them pop right back up to the surface. And then we have our great diving seabirds like our puffins and our mers that are amazing divers. They have those heavy, dense bones that allow them to go deeper in the water, but it also makes it a little bit tougher for them to fly. All right, guys, stay tuned till next time to learn more about this awesome group of birds, which we call seabirds. And I will talk to you guys again next time. Bye.